following program deals with a controversial subject. The theories expressed are not the only possible interpretation. Viewers are invited to make a judgment based on all available information. This program contains images which may be disturbing to younger or sensitive viewers. Parental discretion is advised. Tonight on In Search of. Is this the actual face of Jesus Christ? Was his image burned into this fabric during a supernatural resurrection? We'll offer startling scientific research into the Shroud of Turin. Coming up, could the fibers of this sacred cloth prove the very existence of God? Examine the Shroud of Turin. And the Shroud of Turin. Is this the authentic burial cloth of Jesus Christ? This scientist thinks he knows the truth. The Shroud of Turin. It may be the most sacred and controversial artifact in the world. The cloth that is said to have covered Jesus in his death has triggered a virtual holy war since its discovery in the Middle Ages. Is it a medieval fake or evidence of the resurrection? Now science has collided with faith in the quest to determine the true origin of the mysterious veil. He may be the most important figure of all time, and his death on the cross may be more famous than any moment in history. The crucifixion of Jesus Christ is reenacted each year in the Philippines. To honor Good Friday, the day Christ was crucified, volunteers are literally hung from the cross, enduring the unimaginable pain of nails being driven through their palms. They can only remain on the cross for a few agonizing minutes. We believe we know how Jesus died, but what happened to his body afterwards has been a subject of debate for centuries. In Turin, Italy, one frail artifact may hold the secret to the mystery. The Shroud of Turin is believed by many to be the actual burial cloth of Jesus Christ. It seems to show a faint imprint of his actual face and crucified body. The shroud was first publicly discovered and displayed in France in the 1300s. Since then, the shroud has been kept in this cathedral in Turin, Italy. The Catholic Church only occasionally allows the fragile cloth to be publicly displayed. The question as to whether the shroud image is an authentic image of Jesus or not really is a scientific question. It's just since the advent of photography when the shroud and when the shroud was photographed the first time that scientific interest has been raised. The very first photographs of the shroud were taken in the 19th century by an Italian named Secondo Pia. The faint image of the shroud actually seemed to come alive in the sharp black and white contrast of the negative. The image clearly showed the details of a man's face and body. Modern-day Italian photographer Aldo Goreschi has used current techniques to fully study the photographic details of the shroud. The photographic negative, which I am showing you of the front and the back, reveals instead how this figure emerges as an absolutely perfect man. For example, at the level of the face, we start to see drops of blood around the hair and on the forehead, which were probably consequences of puncture wounds, probably referring to the crown of thorns. Until modern science could more thoroughly study the Shroud of Turin, skeptics simply dismissed it as a painting. But if the Shroud was a forgery from the Middle Ages, the artist would have placed wounds through the palms, duplicating the conventional artwork of the day. One of the controversial aspects of the shroud image was that it showed the nail wounds through the wrist instead of the palms of the hands. Recent scientific studies experimenting with the hands of cadavers proved that the only way to hold the weight of a body in crucifixion was by driving the nails through the wrist area. 
These studies confirm this medical accuracy of the shroud. One of the strongest arguments against the cloth's authenticity occurred in the late 80s. The Catholic Church allowed the shroud to be tested using radiocarbon dating. This process determines an item's approximate age by measuring its exposure to carbon dioxide. A small sample along the edge of the precious cloth was used. The findings were a blow to shroud believers because the results dated it back to the time of the Middle Ages when it was first discovered. However, many scientists see flaws in the results of these experiments. Dr. John Jackson believes that the chance for an accurate dating may have been lost forever when the shroud caught fire in 1532. At the time of the 1532 fire, the carbon-14 content of the shroud linen was uh, significantly altered by many centuries because of an interaction at elevated temperatures with the carbon dioxide in the air. Carbon dating is not everything that it, people think it is. It's what we call rogue sampling. Many, many items have been carbon dating that have been wrong uh, by thousands of years that we know where the, what the date really was. Dr. Frederick Zugaby is the medical examiner for Rockland County, New York. He also considers himself a forensic expert on the shroud. Actually, I've been studying the Shroud of Turin for about 50 years. The medical examiner's specialty is reconstruction of mechanism, manner, and cause of, of death or injury. Dr. Zugaby created his own crucifix apparatus to try to simulate its effects on the human body. The nailing of the hands, the nailing of the feet, the length of time up almost up to six hours on the cross are there would cause shock. Zugaby alleges that the stains on the shroud match the wounds that were inflicted on Jesus. In collating it with the scriptures, the Shroud of Turin was extremely accurate. Rivulets of blood coming from the points of penetration of the crown of thorns the various bruises on the face. There was over 100 scourge wounds on the whole body, front and back. The blood on all parts of the body, there is no image. What does that mean? It means that the blood was there before the image. If Dr. Zugaby's forensic work shows evidence of a crucifixion, it is not yet proof that the victim was Jesus Christ. But one scientist's bizarre experiment may support that claim. We'll have the radioactive results when we come back. Could this be the true face of Jesus Christ? How was this image permanently imprinted on the Shroud of Turin? Some scientists believe that when his body was wrapped in a burial shroud and placed in a cave, at some point it was exposed to a powerful burst of radiation. It's believed that the radioactivity was created by the resurrection. If there were a radiation effect that caused the image, it would fit in with the biblical theory of the resurrection. Those of us that believe in the resurrection, we know that that body went from a potentially corruptible state to an incorruptible state. Some, some biochemical transformation had to take place. In an attempt to duplicate the radiation effect allegedly caused by the resurrection, Dr. Aceta submitted himself to a rare medical procedure where radioactive material was injected into his own body. He was then scanned and photographed to produce three-dimensional x-rays. What I'd like to demonstrate here are similarities between what nuclear imaging would do from a real human subject compared to the shroud image. These computer images show the amazing effects of emitted nuclear radiation coming from his body. A slide image of the shroud of Turin is placed on a light table, which the computer converts into a dramatic three-dimensional image. 
The radiated image of Dr. Aceta is remarkably similar to the unusual three-dimensional image found on the cloth of the shroud. So in our opinion, the image uh, is due to some form of radiation. You don't have to reproduce a resurrection to appreciate an energy phenomena occurring within the cloth, giving rise to an anatomically accurate image of the body inside the shroud. The totality of the scientific argument is that this is the burial cloth of Jesus. We have more evidence that this is the case than we have evidence of most things that we call fact in the world today. For as many scientists that maintain that the shroud is authentic, there are other members of the scientific community that still have their doubts. In the search for answers, we may be verging on a breakthrough. Until we have definitive proof, the Shroud of Turin will remain a matter of faith. <laughs>